ప్రొఫెసర్ ఆర్ అశోక మణి డైరెక్టర్ ఫర్ రీసెర్చ్ అండ్ డెవలప్మెంట్ ధనలక్ష్మి ఇంజనీరింగ్ కాలేజ్ తాంబరం చెన్నై ఈ ఇస్ ఫార్మర్ ప్రొఫెసర్ అండ్ హెడ్ ఆఫ్ ద డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఫిజిక్స్ అన్నా యూనివర్సిటీ చెన్నై ఈ ఇస్ ప్రెసెంట్లీ గైడింగ్ త్రీ రీసెర్చ్ స్కాలర్స్ హీ హ్యాస్ మోర్ దాన్ ఫార్టీ ఫోర్ ఇయర్స్ ఆఫ్ యూజీ అండ్ పీజీ టీచింగ్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ అండ్ థర్టీ త్రీ ఇయర్స్ ఆఫ్ రీసెర్చ్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ ఫోర్టీన్ రీసెర్చ్ స్కాలర్స్ హ్యావ్ ఆప్టెన్ డాక్టరేట్ అండర్ ఇస్ గైడెన్స్ ఇన్ ద ఏరియా ఆఫ్ మెటీరియల్ సైన్స్ అండ్ సాలిడ్ స్టేట్ ఫిజిక్స్ He has more than 150 research publications to his credit of which 90 are in international journals. He has authored a book on solid state physics which is an international publication. He has participated in several international conferences both in India as well as in foreign countries such as USA, UK, France, Germany, Italy and Yugoslavia. He has been a guest scientist at ICTP Italy several times. He is a fellow and treasurer of Tamil Nadu Academy of Sciences. Welcome to the UGC lecture series in applied electronics and we are seeing the paper on physics of materials. We had the earlier chapter the bondings in solids. Now, we will move on to the next chapter which is on crystal structure and this is the first lecture in this chapter on crystal structure and the contents of uh, this lecture will be as follows. Formation of solids, lattice, translational periodicity, basis vectors, basis and crystal structure. Now, we move on to the origin of the universe. You know the fantastic thing about the big bang theory, the first 3 minutes the most important period 3 minutes we had everything in the state of plasma, then we go to the fourth state of matter is plasma, then you have got a gas, a liquid and then solid. So, you first initially you think of the plasma that is a collection of ions and negative and positive ions and after cooling when the universe got cooled or increase of pressure it lowers the kinetic energy reduces the interatomic distance the dilute gas become a more condensed gas thereby there is a reduction in the interatomic distance from gas you go to a liquid almost freely movable atoms and a low compressibility short interatomic distance in a gas the molecules will be far apart you know in the case of a liquid say water the intermolecular distance would have been decreased the shorter interatomic or intermolecular distance spatial and temporal you have got uh, gas then it goes to liquid state then upon as time goes on you go to a solid state and uh, I told you the freely movable atoms the short interatomic distance and uh, finally, you have the spatial and temporal fluctuations in the short range order. Spatial and temporal fluctuations in short range order in the case of a liquid and in the case of solid you know the atoms will be regularly arranged as I will be showing in the lectures to come. We will be talking about solids the crystal structure in which they are the different solids are arranged the various structures and in the solid state there may be phase transformations with regard to the origin of the earth itself. Now, there be you know when you apply pressure or when you apply temperature to the iron in the earth it may undergo structural changes the phase transitions 
the structural transitions, the magnetic ordering will also change, charge ordering and uh, several other things such as superconductivity. Now, all these things are related to the crystal structure right. Okay. Let us now move on to the kinds of solids that you can have either the solids may be crystalline or non crystalline. You take SiO2, you got crystalline SiO2 wherein you got uh, silicon bigger atom and uh, the oxygen atoms here okay. you got silicon and oxygen in a crystalline solid wherein you have got periodicity you see um, a hexagon here the same hexagon is repeated here the hexagon is repeated here or the atoms are arranged in a periodic fashion when whenever the atoms are arranged in a periodic fashion or a repetitive manner the material is called a crystalline material a crystalline solid is a crystalline right wherein in a amorphous solid there will be no periodicity there will be no regularity there will be no repetition of atoms right you see here upon quenching upon rapid cooling you get a amorphous or non crystallized SiO2 the former the first one is the crystalline SiO2 here which is shown here where it, there is ordering right you got uh, a hexagon and hexagon the atoms are arranged silicon and oxygen atoms are arranged in a regular order but in here you do not have regularity you see a bigger region and a much bigger region a smaller region there is no regularity here right there is no ordering whenever there is no ordering that means it is a non crystalline material SiO2 is silicate now you know silica right silica is a glass you know glass is a amorphous solid rubber is amorphous bakelite chalk they are examples of amorphous materials there is no periodic arrangement of atoms whereas in the other hand on the other hand you have got uh, very many metals and alloys and compounds you take a metal like simple metal like aluminum or nickel or copper or alloys like uh, Ni 3 Al Ta 3 Al or compounds like Na Cl Mg Cl 2 wherein there will be Na and Cl and Na and Cl. In the case of in the lectures and bonding you have already seen how the Na ion will be surrounded by chlorine ions Cl ion will be surrounded by sodium ions. Now, there will be a regularity in the arrangement of ions right. So, a periodicity will be there a material is said to be crystalline if the atoms are arranged in a periodic manner right there is a regularity in the arrangement of order in the arrangement of atoms that is called a crystalline solid. Now, therefore, as I told you regarding the origin of the universe or you take a molten material and you transform it to a solid state a molten if you have molten iron you put it in a uh, container now this is a molten liquid right the molten material and uh, what you find is when it starts uh, in initially when you are poured into a container there are certain points where the what you call nucleation starts solidification begins there are certain points where entire thing is a liquid but you have certain points where nucleation starts small nuclei a collection of fewer atoms will be there and around a particular atom there will be what you call a few atoms will be gathering and they are called a nuclei right and the nucleus will grow in size. So, the these nuclei they start growing right the crystals that will form and they are called grains right the remaining region is still in the liquid state right as more time elapses finally, the entire liquid is converted into the solid, but the important point is in every solid material right you take a piece of gold or a piece of iron or whatever material that you got in a periodic table all metals if you take they will be having what are called there will be arrangement of atoms in a, a regular order 
that is called a grain. What is a grain? Grain is a region where the atoms will be arranged in a regular manner. That is a grain. Now, th there will be what, what are called grain boundaries, right? They are called grain boundaries. There are certain regions, this is a grain boundary. In the grain boundary, the atoms will be disorderly arranged. There will be no, you know, there is a region where a, a few tens of angstroms thick where there will be no order, here there will be no order, right. Again, this is another grain, there will be order here, there will be the atoms are arranged in an orderly manner here, the orderly manner here, again orderly manner here, but the orientation of uh, the atoms that you got here in this grain and in this grain th their orientations may differ, will differ. So, anyway there will be ordering here, there will be ordered arrangement atoms here, the ordering will be here also, but the ordering will be in a different orientation and there will be again ordering here in this grain. So, there are grains, they are called grains and uh, these are all grain boundaries where there is a disorder right, grain boundaries. Therefore, the A refers to the formation of stable nuclei and B refers to growth of uh, nuclei, the nucleation growth. It is very famous the wordings, the nucleation and growth, lot of thermodynamics comes here, whether the nuclei that is formed, will it be stable, how far that should be a critical radius above which only the nucleation will, will the nuclei will start growing the nucleation and growth the nuclei they start uh, growing leading to small crystals here and uh, this is tiny crystal this is again a tiny crystal right that will be order here. So, there are tiny crystals or grains and uh, followed by what are called grain boundaries a disorder right. And in the next slide, you will again see the tiny dots show the nuclei and so uh, again a nuclei here the formation of small bigger nuclei right. So, you got bigger nuclei and from A you go to B the growth of uh, these nuclei into small crystallized. What do you observe now? The crystallized here there is order right, the arrow along which I move the um, unit cell I will now call unit cell or the arrangement is order is orderly right you got there is order and similarly here there is order right the building block or whatever that you have got a square the squares are orderly arranged the squares are orderly arranged. So, this is a crystal this is another crystal. So, from small nuclei you go to slightly bigger nuclei the nuclei they start growing they give rise to bigger crystals and from bigger crystals you go to much bigger crystals right much bigger crystals. Now, where are the grain boundaries you see here you know the repetition is there right the squares are repeated or the atoms are arranged in a periodic manner here, but there is something something goes wrong if the entire thing is repeated throughout the volume it is called a single crystal what is a single crystal for certain specialized applications scintillation counter some nuclear detectors you need single crystals right single crystals are for special applications what is a single crystal you have got atom here atom here atom here the atoms are periodically arranged throughout the entire volume for throughout the entire volume of a crystal if the atoms are periodically arranged it is called a single crystal is it a single crystal this is not a single crystal you got a grain grain here, you got a grain here, grain here, there is order here, there is again order here, but you see the way in which the atoms or the cells are arranged, it is uh, orderly arrangement is there in this region, but again there is orderly arrangement, but the, something goes wrong here in between right. So, this is a polycrystalline sample, whereas a single crystal is one in which the, there will be order you see the grain boundary here right there is a grain boundary. So, if this would have been followed continuously throughout the volume throughout this entire slide it would have been called them it would have been a single crystal, but that is not the case you have the pattern like this here this pattern the orientation is different right. So, this is a 
surely a polycrystalline sample. Now, between the grains, okay, you have got or the crystallites, you have got uh, some kind of misorientation. You don't have the this region is called a grain boundary, right? Called a grain boundary, as I told you earlier, the grain boundaries were there, and uh, now this is a grain boundary, right? These are the grain boundaries, okay? Now this is a crystal here, this is a crystal here, there is a grain boundary, right? This is a grain boundary region, okay? And uh, you may ask the question, why should you study the chapter on crystal structures or what is the importance, why should one study, what motivates you to uh, study the crystal structure. Now, the study of the crystal structures using X radiation, I told you that crystal structures can be studied using X ray diffraction, we have seen the Bragg's law and so on. The positional arrangement of atoms can be studied by X ray diffraction by studying this positional arrangement or by knowing how the atoms are arranged, what is it you are getting? By studying the crystal structure along with the nature of bonding, right, how the you know the atomic arrangement plus now where from you get the these electrons, these electrons are coming from the valence electrons of the atoms but therefore, the important point is the following the position of the atoms along with the fact that the how the electrons are arranged to bind the atoms that you have got in the solid these two together will decide the properties what properties the physical chemical and biological all the properties of non living species and living species non living the normal materials and living biological systems living species all these things are governed by the two factors the structure and bonding the very important thing the crystal structure and the bonding means what how the the germanium atom here and another germanium they are bonded to each other by means of the electrons how the electrons are distributed between two germanium atoms this is the crystal structure of germanium so the motivating factor as to why one should study the crystal structure is along with the crystal structure if you know the bonding many of the properties of materials are uh, determined by the arrangement of atoms and the the bonding behavior or bonding in nature. The arrangement of atoms in space is called the crystal structure this is one arrangement right you have got a, is that a regular arrange, regularity right there is a arrangement of atoms in the most important semiconducting material like silicon this is how the atoms are arranged right the arrangement of atoms in silicon or germanium. I told you in the last series of lectures on bonding after 1960 silicon has taken over germanium you know SC or silicon rectifier and um, you know MOSFET many things many electronic uh, components which are used in computers and so on are based on silicon. So, this is the crystal structure of silicon the bonding in silicon or germanium both are the same. So, silicon and this is germanium atom here germanium atom here the electrons that you are having here they give rise to the bonding they explain the bonding the covalent bonding. So, along with the position of the arrangement of atoms namely the crystal structure and the bonding all the properties can be studied I mean the properties means electrical thermal optical magnetic superconducting pro all the properties I will be talking about phonons the atoms in solids they are vibrating in the end of the chapter. Now, that gives you the explains the phenomenon of superconductivity therefore, when you want to explain the various phenomena or various properties of solid materials the physical properties chemical properties and not only materials the living tissues you know the biological systems then there are also DNA so many other things then in all cases the arrangement of atoms 
as well as the bonding that exists between the atoms they are very important in order to understand the properties. So, you pass on to now crystal structure how do you explain the crystal structure the basic thing one should understand are the three words what is meant by a lattice then the other words basis the crystal structure the terminologies which are to be understood are lattice basis crystal structure. So, what is crystal structure it is nothing but you have a lattice lattice plus basis gives the crystal structure. What is the lattice it is an array of points in space you visualize in space it is imaginary network of points in space you have got a point here you have got another point here separated by distance a another point here separated by again distance a or the distance between these two will be 2 a then 3 a 4 a and similarly you got so a here then a here and similarly you can have a here or b here and then b here and so you translate this point from here to here translate it from here to here and so on similarly you translate it from here to here and generate network of points a set of points in space where there is regularity or there is a a perfect arrangement a regular neat pattern a repetitive pattern is there right a repetitive pattern is there this is called a lattice right a lattice uh, this is called a lattice then this is called a basis basis refers to what an atom or a group of atoms or an ion or a group of ions right that gives what is called a crystal structure this is a crystal structure right okay it is in two dimensions I will tell you more about it in order to, uh, that you have a very firm footing or understanding of uh, crystal structure. Now, you see a lattice here right a network of points and a collection of points an orderly arrangement of points right a very important point an orderly arrangement of points here you got a point here point here point here point here they are orderly arranged then this is a basis right now this is a basis now you put the basis at the lattice point right the basis now has only one atom suppose the basis is copper how do you get the copper crystal copper structure. So, you have only one atom right the, the copper atom in the monatomic solid the same kind of atom. So, the basis contains only one atom right now this is the copper atom you put the copper atom on the basis right you got a basis you see the green here again. So, the copper atom the atom is kept here now again you see the green the lattice on the lattice you put the basis right you got copper atom. So, this gives the copper crystal now on the other hand the basis having one atom you got two atoms here right the basis contains two atoms you got a one circle and one something like a rectangle right then where do you have two atoms you take an ACL what is a basis it is a Na ion and a Cl ion right in the case of copper it is a monatomic or the entire crystal is made up of only copper atoms right in the case of copper you have a lattice here then you put the copper atom at every lattice point you put the copper atom ok. Then you get what is called a crystalline copper this is a crystalline copper on the other hand if the basis contains not only one atom, but two atoms or you may have more atoms you take barium titanate what is the basis B A T A O 3 basis contains one barium atom one titanium atom then three oxygen atoms right. So, if you have got a compound like barium titanate then the basis becomes more complicated, but take the case of NaCl a simple case I mean two kinds of atoms Na and Cl you assume this to be Na and this is Cl then these two should be kept along the um, lattice point you see here the lattice point is here Na is here Cl is here right lattice point is here about the lattice point you have to put the two ions right about the lattice point you have to put the two ions the ions are here Na and Cl right or you have got two atoms or two ions right Na and Cl. Now, these things are to be very clearly understood right what is the basis one should not be getting confused when you have got uh, more than two atoms how do you visualize the 
the crystal structure and where do you keep the atoms. I will strengthen my argument by showing this slide once again you got a, a three dimensional periodic array of atoms or molecules in this is a space lattice a regular periodic arrangement of points in space you see here there is periodicity right you got a periodic arrangement of atoms right you all agree that there is a periodic arrangement of atoms periodic means uh, a 2 a 3 a 4 a 5 a and is a square lattice again a 2 a 3 a 4 a ok is a periodic is a square lattice what I do now with this lattice I attach a basis now the basis now contains two atoms right the basis this is the basis atom A and atom B or ion A and ion B one may be N A ion the other may be C L ion. So, you got the basis contains two kinds of ions right. So, you got positive ion and a negative ion or two kinds of atoms ok. And now, I am showing clearly atom A here atom B here. Now, the atom A will be kept here atom B will be kept the lattice where is the lattice point the green will be at the center right green will be at center. So, about the lattice point you have to put the two atoms if there is a ternary system then you have to keep the three kinds of atoms about the lattice point right. So, the basis contains one atom or two atoms a group of atoms or a group of ions in the case of uh, sodium chloride solid you do not have atoms you got ions N A ion and C L ion. So, the N A ion will be kept here C L the bigger ion will be going here right the lattice point will be here. So, about the lattice point you have to put the ions right this gives the crystal structure as I am indicating here NaCl structure sodium chloride crystallizes in the FCG structure as all of you know the basis consists of a Na and a Cl atom right you got a Na and Cl atoms or Cl ions right these fundamental things are very very important right. Then when you talk of uh, the two dimensional lattice this is called a lattice right what is the lattice periodic arrangement of points you do not talk of atoms a periodic arrangement of points in space is called a lattice ok. Now, you see a periodic arrangement right of uh, points here the repeating pattern of atoms the first you have got a lattice point here a lattice point here lattice point here lattice point here this a the vector a is called a, a primitive translation vector why it is called translation vector I can as I told you earlier a you can have 2 a 3 a. So, this lattice point from this lattice point you can move to this lattice point you can generate the entire lattice right you got a two dimensional lattice by repeating a and similarly these lattice points your lattice point here the lattice point here these lattice points along this direction can be repeated by translating b. So, a and b are called the, the primitive translational vectors by repeating these translation vectors you can generate the entire lattice. Now, we will move on to the summary of uh, today's uh, talk and uh, the summary will uh, go on like this crystal structures have a bearing on the physical properties of solids all lattices have the property of translational invariance and uh, the questions that we have are define lattice basis and uh, unit cell. The question number 2 will be what is meant by translational invariance with this we come to the end of uh, lecture 1 and the rest of the things we will see in the lectures to come. Thank you. Mm -hmm.